this is the YouTube video demo for the timeline project of Jiangpeng Chen and Yu Xinhu. And our topic is implementation of linear feedback shift register as pseudo random number generator and the performance comparison between the hardware using HDL and software using Python. A linear feedback shift register, also known as LFSR, is based on the digital building block of shift register. What makes it different is that it has a linear feedback function. The input of a shift register is a linear function of the same shift register's previous state. And there will be some positions in the shift register to be chosen for performing the computation in the linear function. And this position chosen from the original shift register is called tabs. And in the linear function, an XOR gate is the most common computation used in the linear function. And we have a theoretical maximum output number, which is 2 to the power of n minus 1, where the n is the number of flip-flops contained in the shift register. And for example, an 8-bit linear feedback shift register has 255 maximum output. So let's see some animation about what a linear feedback shift register is. First, we have a shift register. So here we can see that a shift register is consists of a, se a sequence of flip-flops and they are all controlled by the same clock. And then we have the linear feedback function. Here we demonstrate this function in a single XOR gate. So we can see that we are using the last two flip-flops to be the data source of the XOR gate computation. We can see that for the XN and the XN minus one, there's two bits, and these two bits will go through an XOR gate, and then this XOR gate will produce a result as the first bit of the new shift registers in a state. So you can see after computation in an XOR gate, the results will be returned to the first digit of this shift register. And what about the output? The output of this shift register is the last digit which is named is XN in our example. So when rising clock, the bits, the original bits stored in the XN before will be output as our sequence of pseudo random number. And then the XN and the XN minus one digits will be transmitted to a XOR gate and then they will they will go through an XOR computation and the final results will be returned as the new first digit of the new the new linear feedback shift register. Here we have an example for running three times of shifting. Here we can see there's an initial state of this example shift register. We can see the, the inner state of this shift register is 11000110. And then we begin to give it a rising clock. And it will be shift to the right and output the last digit, which is stored in the XN register. And the result, the output result is zero. And then we will shift all the bits to the right for one digit. And also, we will use the last two bits to be the source of our XOR computation. And then after shifting one time, we get our new inner state results, which is 11100011. And then we can see the outputs. If we shift another time, the output will be the last digit, which is 1. And then we begin to shift another time. So we can see the inner digits are all being shifted to the right. And then the last two digits will go through an XOR computation. Then we have our new state after two shifts. So we can see that after two shifts, 
the inner states of our LFSR became 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and the output result is 1. And then we shift it another time, and also we do our XOR computation. So the new inner states became 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. And then if we give it another rising clock, we will get our new output result, which is 0. And from this diagram, we can see how an LFSR works. It basically contained of two processes. One is shifting, another is the linear feedback computation. Here's our scope of study. On the left hand side is the table which summarizes our studied LFSR's features. And on the right hand side is the diagram of our LFSR's. Let's take a look at it. For the first one, we used a 8 bits LFSR which has 8 flip-flops. The number of tabs is 2 and the number of XOR computation is 1. And also we can see on the right hand side for the first 8 digit 2 tabs diagram. And the second LFSR is a 8 digit 3 tabs and 2 XOR computations. And the third one is a 16 digit 2 tabs and 1 XOR computation. And the last one is 16 bits, 3 tabs, and 2 XOR computations. And as you have noticed, we have we've applied the same seed to all our LFSRs. A seed is what you use as an initial state for generating the pseudo random number. So our purpose is to test to what extent the increase of bits and the increase of tabs affects the running time for generating the pseudo random numbers. And our methodology and methods are basic and simple and straightforward. First, we will code our LFSRs in both WHDL and Python. Then we will simulate them in model sim as simulation in hardware. And we will run the code in Python console to see the results. And we will capture the running time in Python. So since the running time of a Python program depends on manufacturers, for each one, we get a slightly different time consumption. So we run it for 10 times to get an average time consumption as our result. Here are the codes. Here we presented the codes for our first LFSR, which is 8-bit and 2-text, and we will skip other, co other codes for other LFSRs because all those codes are basically similar. Here we can see, if you take a look at the right-hand side, here is the major part of our shifting and our XOR computation. We have also included all these codes in our terminal project reports, which you can take a closer look. Here is the RTL view of our implemented 8-bit 2 tabs LFSR as hardware. From this picture, we can see it, our code is a success, and it creates a beautiful 8-bit 2 tabs LFSR. Okay. Let's take a look at our experiment result. Our first experiment resulted a cycle of 1,260 NS, and the output random numbers is 63 numbers. The time consumed is 1,260 NS. So we can see our output is not the maximum theoretical output of our 8-bit LFSR. We have summarized our conclusion in the last part of our report. Now let's take a look at our next experiment. Our next experiment is an A-bit 3 times LFSR, which has a cycle of 2,540 NS. Also, this is our 
this is the time consumed in generating all these possible outputs. But the output is 127 numbers. Also, it's not the maximum theoretical output. And for the third LFSR, we have a cycle of 5,100 NS. So this time we have an output of 255 numbers. And for the fourth LFSR, here, once we increased our SR gates, also increased our tappings, we have a much larger cycle and a much larger output. Now the cycle is 655,340 NS. And our possible outcome is 32,767 random numbers. So we found that as the XOR gates increase, we have a possible output number which is closer to our theoretical maximum output numbers. This is our experiments and results in software. We created the same LFSR using Python. Here we use the Python built-in functions to capture the system's time for each run. This is the result of our AB2 types LFSR in Python. Here we can see we have 10 runs results for it and the average running time is 44,000. 450 nanoseconds. And then this is the result of our ABC VTAPS LFSR in Python. The average result we calculated is 74,070 NS. Next is our 16 bit 2 TAPS LFSR result. Same as what we did before, we have recorded an average result of 142,000. 180 NS. At last, this is our result of 16 bit VTAPS LFSR in Python, and we got a very large running time which is 40,427,450 NS. Finally, we have summarized all our experiment results in a single table. We can see that there are five findings after we did all our experiments. First is that the time consumed in software implementation is greatly larger than in hardware. The second is that the time consumption gap between software and hardware becomes larger. As the number of bits and the number of XO gates increases, so it tells us that the more digits required for a pseudo-random number, or the more sophisticated the inner logic of a LNFR, the greater the advantage of a hardware implementation would be. This makes the disadvantage of implementing the LFSR PING in software greater when more than two XO gates are used. The fourth of our conclusion is that a LFSR has the smallest possible outcome when it only uses one XO computation. And the last conclusion is that when two XO gates are used, the LFSR can generate the n minus one power of two minus one possible output space. However, this may require more experiments and mathematical proof, which may be our future works as improvements. Here are our references that include the papers, the internet contents, and the YouTube channel we reference. That's all our works. Thank you.